All right, we are now ready to rock and roll now that we have some basic information on how these tools function. So let's talk about what Analyze does very quickly. And this is pretty important. You can go through all of the steps to track some footage to something and it still not work. So that's why it has to analyze. And you keep your eye on this as it's doing it. And then you can determine whether you need to start from scratch. So what we're going to do is we're only going to do about two seconds worth of this footage as far as tracking. So we're going to click analyze forward and then we're going to click stop. Also, if you like, you can edit this footage. And let me show you how to do that very quickly. This bar here is our work region. And we could take this work area and we can move to resize how long the footage plays back. And you can go to the composition menu at that point and you can choose to trim comp to work area. What that will do is it will cut off that extra footage and you don't really have to have it dangling at the back there. So if you don't want to do that, that's fine. I just want to show you how you can actually trim footage. Okay, now let's go ahead and just double check everything. We have track motion selected. We have our source selected, which is the film. The track type is transform because we want to follow the footage. We're not doing a stabilize right now. We're only going to track position, not rotation or scale. The footage that we have to follow this is the lander. But in the edit target button, if you had other footage, or buttons or fonts or text or whatever you could choose it from this list so it doesn't have to be the lander it could be any other footage you have in there that could track this now we're going to click analyze forward and you'll notice that it locks on okay once it's done we're given these points here and these points tell us that the uh, tracker locked on very nicely now I'm going to hit the home key on my keyboard and I'm going to manually scrub through this so we can look at the tracker. And no matter what happens, check out the tracking box. It follows the rock perfectly. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click Apply. Now you'll notice that we're on a layer here. All right, so we're on an actual composite layer for this footage. And when we apply, we'll be returned back to our regular composite. So I'm going to click Apply and then it's going to ask me to apply which dimensions, X and Y, which is floor and up and down, or we can do X only or Y only. And this is important to understand. Let's say you have footage of someone who is uh, riding a really crazy wave. Chances are they're going to be up, going up and down like this and not really this way. So in this case, you would choose Y only. Now, if they're, you know, standing on a skateboard and they're moving their legs back like this, you might want to do the X only because they're moving only in this direction. But this footage is moving up and down and left and right. So we're going to choose X and Y. We hit OK. And we're brought back to our comp. I'll hit the home key of my keyboard. I'm going to scrub. And you'll notice, check it out, the lander is following the rock precisely. It is stuck to it and it's actually moving with it. As it moves down, it moves down. So hopefully you can see how powerful this can be. Think about what you could do. You could have someone have laser eyes or, you know, uh, generating fire from their palms or about to shoot lightning out of their fingers. And those special effects can be latched on to wherever that tracking box is latched on to. You can do all kinds of really cool things. You can connect them to particles. You can do all kinds of cool stuff. So the tracking is very powerful. And that's why the analyze is so powerful as well. If you don't apply the analysis, the data is not transferred to the actual object, which is supposed to receive it. You'll also notice that when we have our tracker, we're given a motion trackers layer. And we can see the track point, and we can also see the feature size, the search box size, and all of these keyframes that are generated as it follows the object that has been assigned to follow. Okay, so now that we've taken a look at how cool motion tracking is, let's go ahead now and try to stabilize this very, very jumpy rock.